Hey, what's up, guys? PicoLetter25 here, bringing you my second park battle. I have my home park, Six Flags Great America, yet again, versus the park I most recently went to because I visited my relatives down in Atlanta. And uh, Six Flags Over Georgia went there. First time, and I was impressed. Now let's compare these two parks and see how they do go. No spoiler, this is going to be closer than you think. First up, we have Batman the Ride. Both these rides are exactly the same, the only difference being the queue line and the color scheme. But that's not really going to affect the ride at all. I mean, they're both exactly the same, so they're both earning two points. Next up, we have Superman Ultimate Flight. Both of these rides are exactly the same as well. I mean, just the only difference being the terrain interaction, because Six Flags Over Georgia's does interact with the terrain. You dive under a bridge, you come close with some rocks, but the layout's exactly the same, so they'll just both earn two points yet again. Next up, we have two different family rides. We have Wizard, a Schwarzkopf speed racer. Speed, speed racer meaning a coaster well, like Wizard, but the main distinguishing factor is that the lift hill is a spiral powered by a hot rail. And the Wizard has an Ace Coaster Landmark Award, which is a very prestigious honor. And it's actually one of two coasters at Great America to have it. Can you guess the other one? And then you just have Dalanega Mine Train, Dalagana, however you pronounce it. Um, an aerodynamics mine train. I mean, it's kind of a jerky ride as well. I mean, it was built in 67. And just Wizard will take this for having the Ace Coaster Landmark Award and for being much more unique than a mine train. Next up, we have the two Coney Island Cyclone clones. Try saying that ten times fast. We have Viper from Rigeal Construction, a far left field manufacturer. And then you have Georgia Cyclone, a Dinco um, Cyclone attempt. And Viper will take this for being much smoother than the Georgia Cyclone. Viper is a very enjoyable ride, while Georgia Cyclone isn't very enjoyable at all when I went on it. I was constantly being thrust forward into my lap bar and then thrown back into my, toward the back of my seat. And it was just chipping away at my lower spine. And it's just, it was crazy. I didn't like it. Next up, we have the Out and Back Woodies. I know this might not be the fairest matchup, but we have American Eagle, an Intamin racing coaster, and you have Great American Screen Machine, uh, a PTC Out and Back Woody. And American Eagle will take this for being much larger. I mean, it's got four, oh, over 4,500 feet of track. It goes much faster. It's taller. And it's just, it's overall a better ride. Even though it might be a tad rougher, it's, gonna, it's just much larger. Next up, we have the Custom Loopers. Both of these are not the best rides of the park. The rides that most people would like to see go at the park. We have Demon, an aerodynamics custom looper, back from 1980. And you have Ninja, considered one of the worst coasters in the southeast, if not ever. And it's just a Vacoma custom looper, and it's known for being very rough, jerky, and headbanging. However, the thing I love about Ninja is that the Vacoma over-the-shoulder restraints really work in the favor of tall people. I'm a pretty tall person. And when you're tall enough, um, it only jostles around your neck. You're not getting any head banging. It's neck jostling. Even though I still had to take an ibuprofen after getting after this thing, getting off of this thing. And Demon will take this for being better themed, being considerably smoother, and for being a Six Flags Great America classic. It was the second roller coaster they ever. That is the second oldest coaster that's still standing at the park. Tied for first if you count turn of the century before the demon renovation. Next up, we have the Steel Kids coasters. We have Spacely Sprocket Rockets, a Vacoma Kitty coaster themed to the Jetsons. And you have Wiley Coyote Canyon Blaster from Chance Rides. And both these both these rides are about the same size. I mean, the only difference being like 200 feet of track, just 8 miles per hour, but the kids aren't really going to notice too much. It's just. They're both about the same duration. It's just they're they're basically very similar to, to be considered considered a significant difference. So both parks learn half a point. Finally, we have the two B and M hypers. We have Raging Bull, B and M's second hyper ever created, and is B and M's first twister hyper because they didn't have enough land for an out and back.
And then you have Goliath, a very recent BNM Hyper from 2008, I think. That has plenty of floater airtime and a Helix turnaround. Both are great rides, but Goliath, they've seen, people seem to prefer much more. I personally prefer Raging Bull, that's in the back row. It's not as jerky in the back row, believe it or not. But Goliath will overall take it for having much more airtime. I was flying out of my seat on that one. Finally, we have some extra coasters. We have the Dark Knight, a Map Rides Indoor Wild Mouse, which is worth one point, V2 Vertical Velocity, and Intimate Impulse Coaster, which the thing about Over Georgia is that they're really lacking a launch coaster. They do not have any launch coasters. And V2 would be worth two points. Goliath, the, the RMC of the park, considerably one of the Arguably one of the best rides at the park. That'll be worth three points. X Flight, a BNM Wing Coaster. That'll be worth two points. And Little Dipper, a PTC um, Classic Coaster from 1950. And that'll be worth half a point since it's a kitty coaster. And Six Flags Over Georgia has extra coasters as well. And this is kind of a tough one, actually, because I did not know how much these should be worth. Daredevil Die was either going to be worth two or three because. Daredevil Die could be considered the best in the park. It's my personal favorite in the park, actually. But if I went front row in Goliath, then I probably would have said not. I don't know, but I just made it two points. Georgia Scorcher, one of the better BNN stand-ups. I made that worth two points. Some people will argue that's worth one. And Mindbender. I originally was going to make this one, but it's one of the best Schwarzkopf loopers, so I made it two. So that would just be earning six points total for the park. I, I had a really hard time deciding the point value, but they'll both probably add it to around six. Next up, we have drop towers. We have giant drop, an Intamin drop tower, and I realized I forgot to put the height. That will be 227 feet, I think. Because uh, I, it wasn't, they didn't have a page on that for research purposes. And it's just your standard sit down Intamin giant drop, or drop tower, or whatever. It's nothing too special. And you have acrophobia on the other side. It's shorter, but like 20 feet, 30 feet even. But it's considered an intimate stand-up. You're still sitting, I think. And But the thing is that you get tilted forward. Not like facing vertically like Falcon's Fury, but you're tilted forward so you have to face the ground. It's not the ride for the acrophobic, hence the name. An acrophobia is a one-of-kind drop tower. And it would be taking two points. Or one and a half points for over Georgia. Next up we have the extra flat rides. But the flat rides at these parks, I realize, I reverse the order of them. The King Chaos of Revolution should have been the left and vice versa. Besides the drop tower, these flat rides are nothing alike, so they just simply earn credit for having them. Six Flags Over Georgia has a Sky Screamer and a Larson Super Loop, while Six Flags Green America has a Huss Top Spin and a Huss Frisbee. Nothing alike. So they'll just simply be earning two points each for the park. Like two points for Over Georgia and two points for Great America. Then we have family rides. Six Flags Great America has eight more. And if you see, if you do not know, if these don't look accurate to you, you should see my update video. But if you haven't, I'll say it right here. The family ride, in my definition, excludes every roller coaster, even kiddie coasters. Pay pay to uh, do attractions like the Sky Coaster, the one or the bungee jumping or the go karts, the water attractions. Because I if if you vote yes on my update video, then I might do water park only battles, so I'd like support on that. And I also exclude thrilling flat rides, top spins, frisbees, super loops, sky screamers, whatever. And with all those deductions included, Six Flags Great America has eight more, 31 v 23. So they'll earn two points. Next up we have the price category. Everyone loves to pay for the park, sarcasm included. And Six Flags Over Georgia, the thing is that it's pretty tough. Some, the weekdays, online tickets, online tickets for the weekdays, they're typically cheaper. They're $43 or $43.99. However, weekends and Fridays can be worth up to $59.99 for tickets. However, that's not every weekend, though. So I included only the, the lowest price or the, one, the mode of the price, the one I saw most often. And the season pass is also much cheaper. So even if I include, if I said it was fifty nine ninety nine, the season pass difference of fifteen dollars would have just made it overall cheaper. And I realized I forgot to put the score up on this one, so the score would be twenty one nineteen. 
Next up, we have the appearance, and this is a tough one. Six Flags Great America has better area theming, especially in Southwest Territory and Mardi Gras. But Six Flags Over Georgia interacts very well with Georgia's natural landscape, being very hilly and grassy. And both these parks look pretty nice, honestly. I mean, yeah, Great America, better area theming, especially in Southwest Territory. That place looks very well themed, in my opinion. And Six Flags Over Georgia has like, these tunnels where you go under a hill and there's leaves and a fan everywhere. And it's also very hilly and it's just, it's a very well designed area interacting with Georgia's natural landscape. And both these parks are just going to earn two points for being pretty in two different ways. And finally we have the operations. This once, so I didn't get to get the full sample of this. But when I went, Six Flags Over Georgia, they both ran two to three trains on most coasters. However, Six Flags Over Georgia was considerably more speedy. Because on certain rides at Great America, like X-Flight, Batman, and even Raging Bull sometimes, you're going to be stacked for a couple minutes. Because there's a lot of shenanigans that goes on there. However, over Georgia, if you're stacked, it's only going to last like 30 seconds or less. The longest stacking I ever had was Superman Ultimate Flight, which both, they, they share pretty shoddy operations on these. However, in over Georgia as well, they also have... Um, the, the they also have two stations for Superman Ultimate Flight, so they can load two trains up at once. But yeah, Over Georgia will take two points for being much more speedy. And look what we have here. We have a tie break. We have a tie. 23 to 23. And I had sorted through several categories in order to find the best one, like food and others. But I decided to give um, points for layout. And the thing is that this is a pretty easy one in my opinion. Six Flags Great America has, is pretty much a circle. Excluding the coasters of Viper and Raging Bull, the thing is pretty much a circle. With some left or rights included like Yukon Territory or whatnot. And it's pretty easy to find everything. The signs are clearly distinguished. Maybe not Eagle, but the things, signs are clearly distinguished. And the Southwest Territory is just a little bulge. You just have to divert right in order to get back to the county fair where XLA is. You just have to divert left. And it's also the, the nail in the coffin in this one is that it's much easier to get to the water park in Six Flags Great America than it is at Over Georgia. In Six Flags Great America, you only have to go halfway through the park. And if you're a gold season pass holder, you can literally just turn right by the Pictorium and you're at Riptide Bay. And you also get 15 minute early access. However, over Georgia, you have to walk all the way to the back of the park. All the way back out by Great American Scream Machine and Ninja and Superman Ultimate Flight. And it's a long commute. So Six Flags Great America. Oh yeah, and another reason. I mean, Six Flags Great America will take the tiebreaker. Here's another reason over Georgia does not work. You know how I said something about the layout or the natural interaction with over Georgia? That makes for some very difficult uphill walks. Like, in order to get from Daredevil Dive to Batman or Mindbender, you have to go down a long hill. And that's a dead end as well. So you have to walk all the way back up that hill, and it's a heck of a walk as well. And it's just, it's just so much better at Great America. It's easier to navigate. It's much more flat, so it's not as hard to commute around. And it's just overall a better laid out park. So the winner, breaking the tie, is Six Lives Great America. Like I said, this would come closer than I expected. Uh, I was even surprised how close this became. And Six Lives Great America is a great park. And Six Lives Over Georgia still is a great park, but is pretty underrated in my opinion. They have one of the best Eurofighters in the nation, and they also have a brilliant B&M Hyper. And those are the highlight attractions. Then they also have the smaller attractions. I think they have 11 coasters. Yeah, 11 coasters, not 12 because the Larson Super Loop does not count. So, yeah, Great America, it's just, it's the winner. Let's just put that frank. So, this has been Pikachu 25 bringing you another park battle even closer. Um, I'll list out the parks I've been to, and I might bring you another surprise one as well, because I'm going to King's Island in a couple days from this when this was uploaded. So, you might see... Um, a King's Island battle, maybe against Six Flags Great America.
or Hershey Park. And that will be a very interesting matchup. I mean, it's a Cedar Fair Park versus an independent or a Six Flags Park. And we'll see how this goes. So, expect a Kings Island one sometime in the next few weeks. Because I really enjoy making these. And I don't know why I'm lingering so long. But this has been Pico Butter 25. And this has been my second park battle. And Six Flags Great America is a superior park. This will end it. Peace.